Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, we are going to be restoring and upgrading this 8-year-old HP Pavilion G6 laptop. This laptop is pretty dirty and the top cover looks like it has paint starting to peel on it. I'm not quite exactly sure what's going on there, but it could definitely use a good cleaning and a few upgrades. So, without further ado, let's begin the restoration. I recently got this laptop and a lot of 5 laptops for $160. I'm pretty sure most of you are eyeing that tiny Pentium 3 Sony Vio laptop. Once I find a compatible 16 volt charger, I'll do a video on that if the laptop ends up working. First we need to see if the laptops actually work. All the other laptops came with no RAM and no hard drive, so I'm surprised to see a DDR3 RAM stick with a capacity of 1GB inside this laptop. I highly doubt this is one of the original RAM sticks of this laptop. Maybe I put the stick in there when I got the machine. Honestly, I don't remember, which is pretty sad. I decided to stick my 240GB test SSD to test the basic functionality of the laptop to see if it actually works. Well, does it actually work? The answer is yes, and it instantly started booting into Windows 10 without giving me a chance to enter the BIOS. After a long time of loading, we're in, and I could see that we have an AMD A63420 in quad-core CPU. I actually never knew that these were quad-cores, but it's probably still a super slow CPU. These also have Radeon HD 6520G graphics built in, and they do support DirectX 11, so I am going to test how well we'll play some games after the upgrades. One problem I noticed right away was the keyboard. Most of the keys do not appear to work. A simple reset the connector could fix this problem, however I already ordered a brand new replacement keyboard. Another problem is that it appears the paint or whatever it is on the palm rest is starting to disappear and flake off. This is apparently a common problem as looking online a lot of these laptops have either worn out trackpad buttons or palm rests. I found one that was the same color on eBay for $20. That is more than I really wanted to pay for one, however I plan on reselling this laptop and most people aren't going to want a laptop with a fading top cover and touchpad. The buttons that are currently installed on the HP are in better shape than the replacement top cover that I bought, so if I can I will try to transfer the buttons over. I'm also going to be doing some necessary uh, upgrades to this laptop. I'm going to be adding 4 gigs of RAM and a 240 gig SSD. While a 120 gig SSD would be just fine for a laptop like this, I only have a 240 gig SSD lying around. Either way, this should make the laptop feel like it's a brand new laptop. So enough talking, let's go ahead and disassemble and clean this laptop. After removing two screws on the bottom, we get access to the RAM slots, Wi-Fi card, and where the hard disk should be. After removing multiple screws on the bottom of the machine, I have to flip over the machine to remove the nasty keyboard. Normally I would be careful when doing this, however the keyboard doesn't even work correctly so all the care in the world has disappeared. After removing the keyboard, I saw there's a lot of dirt and some rust starting to show. My guess is that this laptop has had some contact with liquid before, which could be why the keyboard doesn't really work anymore. Since I'm going to be putting a new top cover on, I'm not going to bother cleaning the old one. After putting on gloves that totally fit my hand, I prepared for the worst. However, it was actually fairly clean inside. The fan had a little bit of dirt in there, there was a bit of dirt on the board, but other than that, it actually wasn't that bad. Next, after unscrewing the motherboard, I had to fight with it for about 5-10 to 10 minutes until I actually got the board out, and we can take a look at the motherboard and how bad the thermal paste was. As I expected, the paste has seen much better days. I'm only going to redo the thermal paste in the CPU as the graphics card is actually cooled by a thermal pad stuck to the bottom of the case. After screwing on the heatsink, I need to screw the motherboard back in and clip in the new palm rest, which looks much better. After sticking on the new palm rest, I have to see if I managed to kill the laptop during surgery. Luckily I didn't, so I can continue putting the laptop back together. While filming this video, the replacement keyboard came in, and what's weird is that the replacement keyboard is louder and more tactile than the original keyboard. Honestly, I quite like it. It makes the typing experience much better, but I wonder why that's the case. After sliding in the new keyboard, I need to reinstall all the screws on the bottom of the machine. Next, I'm going to upgrade the RAM to 4GB and also add in the 240GB SSD. So now we have to see if the machine works in its complete form. And sure enough, it does. So let's install Windows and see how well this laptop actually performs. First, I tried to run Fortnite on this thing, which was not a good idea. In the performance mode at 75% scale in 1366 by 768, you can technically play the game as the FPS averaged around 20 to 30 FPS. However, the game looks so bad I honestly wouldn't even want to play it on this laptop, so I say it's unplayable. Now you might also notice that despite the thermal paste change, the CPU and GPU are still getting pretty hot. 
well technically I only replaced the thorn paste for the CPU but still the CPU is getting incredibly hot not only does it have to do with a terrible heatsink fan combo inside this laptop but also because HP decided to block off about half of the ventilation holes to let the hot air out but anyways let's move on to the next game Next is Minecraft, and we have the Optifine mod installed to help improve performance, but we also set the render distance to 4 chunks and the graphics to fast to try and increase the performance. In Minecraft, it got around 30 to 40 FPS just from walking around a Minecraft survival world. This is pretty playable, although it's definitely not ideal, and you could probably turn up the render distance a little bit more and lock the frame rate at 30 if you want the best balance between viewing distance and performance. Next is GTA 5, which I had a fun time trying to work on this system. At 800 by 600, the lowest settings possible, we were getting around low 20s in the FPS. However, the textures were not loading quick enough, so you cannot see the road, and you were basically driving on the sky. This is not playable at all, and I would not recommend playing GTA on this, although you probably don't find that very surprising. And finally, we have Unigine Heaven, and at 1366 by 768 lowest settings, we got an average of 19 FPS and a score of 481. That's pretty bad, although I'm pretty sure that is not a surprise for most of you. Now no, you cannot game on this laptop, and it's not really a gaming laptop, but I figured I'd try it anyways. But what you're probably here for is how well does this thing do at just general tasks like web browsing. Well, web browsing it does perfectly fine, and YouTube playback it can do 720p perfectly fine. 1080p is a little stuttery and probably not watchable for most people, but 720p works great. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this restoration. We have converted an old, barely functional laptop into something that can be used by somebody again. Hope this has a good future life, and I will see you guys next time. I know this isn't that great of content, but I just need to upload something since it's been a really long time.